Senator Allen. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I, Los Angeles lost a, a great leader this list last week, a true giant of LA politics, the wonderful, warm-hearted, big-hearted Los Angeles City Council member Bill Rosendahl. And he passed away just yesterday at his home in Mar Vista after a four-year battle with cancer. He was courageous, he was compassionate, he was dedicated, he was a true progressive. Uh, he was a mentor and hero to many in my community. He was also a real Renaissance man uh, who you know, raised chickens and gave out his wonderful home-grown eggs to everybody and also gave everybody a, a wonderful smile. Uh, and you know, his recent years spent on the city council in Los Angeles were a capstone to an already brilliant life and extraordinary career. His life in politics began very early. It turns out he actually witnessed in person Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. And he was an organizer for Robert Kennedy in his campaign in 1968. In fact, he was actually at the Ambassador Hotel on that fateful night when RFK was assassinated. He served in the Army with distinction as a psychiatric social worker. He moved to Venice in the 1970s and eventually got a job as a cable provider at Adelphia Communications. And over the ensuing years, he became you know, an extraordinary TV talk show host. And his show on, on cable became the go-to station for politics and for community affairs and discussions. Everybody who wanted to reach voters, anyone who wanted to get their message out in our community got onto TV and interviewed with him. And this was an era long before the talking heads on CNN and MSNBC and Fox News. He was the guy that you had to go talk to on the west side of LA. Of course, he eventually put down his microphone and, be and became a candidate himself. And he was sworn in as the very first openly gay man to win a seat on the Los Angeles City Council. And for close to a decade, he confronted injustice as an elected official with the same bravery and fierce humanity that defined his life. He strove to act from a place of compassion and understanding. His presence and style embodied Westside politics. He was a wonderful people person, incredibly gregarious, and his legacy is so alive today. He was a leader, a public servant, a man who I will personally miss a great deal. And I ask that the Senate respectfully adjourn in the memory of Bill Rosendahl. Senator Mitchell on this item. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. I, too, would like to lend my voice uh, uh, to the chorus who will be remembering Bill for all of his um, uniqueness and work and commitment he brought to Los Angeles. He lived in Mar Vista, a part of which is in the district I have the uh, opportunity to represent. And he participated in that community's proud tradition of echo urban planting and animal husbandry. He took delight in presenting colleagues and constituents and myself eggs from uh, the chickens the, that whom he shared his backyard. That was always delightful to get an egg from Bill Rosendahl. As an incumbent councilman, he um, honored me by supporting my first run for office. And for a while, his council district and the assembly districts I represented um, overlapped at our offices, and we had the opportunity to work together on a number of projects. He was proud of being a liberal among progressives, advocating for those living in poverty and for those living with HIV. Out, outspoken, and sometimes outraged, Bill joined LA City Council as an outsider and promptly threw the doors open wide, inviting people in who had never felt welcome or visible there before. He argued that everyone deserved a seat at the table and was often the voice of those not present in the halls of power, yet ever present on the streets of Los Angeles. One of the last times I saw Bill was at my own church um, in South LA, home of United Methodist, when he, along with others from the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, came in support of vigorous outreach to African Americans at risk for HIV. Some leaders across the divide between communities because it's smart strategy, because it's the right thing to do, but sometimes people find joy in touching and being touched by the humanity we all share, and that was Bill. Bill did some of all of that, but what I will miss most in him and in my world is that full face grin. He made you happy just being in his presence, and the hopeful joy with which he greeted every opportunity to make our town a little bit better. He and his presence will be sorely missed. I ask that we adjourn in his honor. Thank you. 
Thank you, members. Please bring our council member's name forward so that he may be properly memorialized and may he rest in peace, a true icon and true public servant for the great city of LA. Senator, Senator Allen, do you have another adjourn memory? Yeah, I'd like to also uh, rise to adjourn in memory of Ken Howard, who was a Tony and Emmy Award winning actor who passed away on March 23rd at his home near Los Angeles just days before his 72nd birthday. Uh, perhaps best known for his work on the television series The White Shadow, he was featured in numerous other classic shows and films, uh, survived by his loving wife of 25 years and three adult stepchildren. Ken's other family was his acting family. Now, many folks know that Ken was a very devoted and respected leader, in fact, president of, the SA of SAG-AFTRA. He was first elected to the Screen Actor Guild National Board of Directors in, in 2008, and he became president of the union in 2009. It was under his leadership in 2012 that, that the merger of SAG and the American Federation of Television and, and Radio Artists occurred, strengthening and amplifying the voice of 160,000 actors, broadcasters, and other workers. He also taught master classes at the American Repertory Theater Institute, helping to train the next generation of actors. And as a kidney transplant recipient, he helped to pay it forward by supporting and becoming a chancellor of the National Kidney Foundation. So from his days as a high school basketball star to his starring roles on the screen and his distinguished service on behalf of actors across the nation, Ken Howard was very talented and beloved by all that knew him. Another loss for the wonderful city of Los Angeles, and we ask that we adjourn in his memory. Thank you, Senator Allen. Please bring his name forward so that he may be properly memorialized. Senator Fuller. For purposes of introduction. Without objection. Privileges of the floor. Members. I would like to introduce my, my good friend and um, director of the Municipal Water District of Orange County, Linda Ackerman, and with her today is the Marion Bergleson Scholarship Program uh, participants, and uh, we'd like to welcome them to the chambers. Thank you. We hope they'll be filling our shoes one day. Welcome to Senator Fuller's guests. Yeah, I'm going to. Senator Morlock. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise uh, in order to adjourn in memory of Norma Christopher Winton, who was born on March 5, 1928, and just passed away February 27th. She was born, in, <clears throat> born and raised in California, and she graduated from Orange High School and Pasadena Junior College. And uh, Senator Carol Lou would be happy to know that Norma Winton was elected at the age of 18 as the Rose Bowl Queen of 1947, where she would meet her husband, famous sculptor Don Winton. Don Winton, if you look him up and just W-I-N-T-O-N and, and just key in cookie jars, you'll see some of his collectible work that's very valuable uh, today. Norma had a great love for the Lord, for Israel, her family and friends and charmed everyone she met. She also had a great love for animals. She was preceded in death by her husband, Don, three brothers and one sister. She is survived by her daughter, Christy Winton Johnson and her son, Craig Winton, her grandkids, Joy, Kyle and Benjamin. Uh, Don and Norma were clients. I always referred to her as Norma C and had fun uh, with her in that regard. A memorial service will be held uh, for Norma on April 9th at Seabreeze Church in Huntington Beach. and would like you to keep her family in our, your thoughts and prayers, and please join me in adjourning in the memory of Norma C. Winton. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Morlock. Please bring uh, Mrs. Winton's name forward so she can be properly memorialized. Members, we're gonna move back to um, unfinished business, file item 66. This is unfinished business, file item 66. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 209 by Senator Pavley, enacting to surface mining. 
Senator Pavley. Yes, uh, thank you. I just brought up this subject, and the reason I'm uh, uh, doing this as a Senate bill, it's double joined with Assemblymember Gray's bill on the same subject. We work closely together, along with Governor Brown and his administration, and all the stakeholders. There is no opposition to this bill either. Um, Governor Brown last year convened a stakeholder process to hammer out changes to the state's mining law, which is something my staff and I have been pursuing for many years. The time had come. I'm pleased that the process was successful and that this bill, along with Assemblymember Gray's AB 1142, now reflect the work of that stakeholder process and are subject to contingent enactment provision. SB 209 creates the Supervisor of Mines and Reclamation to head the new Division of Mines. It establishes that the fee revenue paid by mine operators will be used to review financial assurances and reclamation plans. It also contains new and flexible provisions for local government borrow pits to be inspected every two years instead of every one year. And in addition, it authorizes corporate financial tests in instead of surety bonds to cover a portion of the operator's financial assurances. To complete the mining reform package, AB 1142 contains the provisions regarding reclamation plans, enforcement, and financial assurances. That was the bill you just voted for. This is the other part of the bill. All opposition has been removed. Environmental and local government groups are also supporting uh, this measure. As for your I vote. Members, debate or discussion? Debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? Bates? Bell? Berryhill? Block? Aye. Canella? Aye. De Leon? Fuller? Gaines? Galjoni? Glazer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Hancock? Hernandez? Hertzberg? I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leba, Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, Morell, Wynn, Nielsen, Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I runner, Stone, no, Vidak, Wykowski, I walk, walk I, Anderson no. Please call the absent members. Bates, no, Bell, I Berryhill, De Leon, Fuller, De Leon I, Fuller, Gaines, Galjoni, I, Hancock, I Hernandez. I Huff, I Leba, I Morlock, No Morell, No Win, No Nilsson, No Runner, Vidak, No. Eyes twenty eight, nose eight. The assembly amendments are concurred in. Members, we're going to move to governor's appointments. That's file item 59, members. File item 59. Senator DeLeon. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, file item number 59, we have James uh, Barthman, uh, Rajesh uh, Patel, and Pedro Santillan. Uh, both Mr. Barthman as well as Mr. Santillan are being reappointed to the uh, Board Building Standards uh, Commission. Uh, Mr. Patel is new to the commission, and he is the assistant director of community development, uh, and uh, he is a building official for the city of Beverly Hills. Uh, they are both uh, very well qualified, and both of them, or all three, I should say, pass on a bipartisan vote. No, no votes. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? I Bates, I Bell, Berryhill, Block, I Canella, I De Leon, I Fuller, I Gaines, 
I Galjoni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, Wynn, I Nilsson, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk. Walk I. Please call the absent members. Bell, I, Berryhill, Hertzberg, I, Morell, I, Runner. Ayes 38, no zero, the appointments are confirmed. Mr. Pro Tem, are we gonna do file item 58? File item 58, Senator DeLone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, we have uh, Celia McGinnis, uh, who is an attorney uh, and also appointment to the California Commission on Disability Rights. She is an attorney in private practice who actually deals with disability actions. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? I. Anderson? No. Bates? No. Bell? I, Berryhill, Block, I, Canella, no, De Leon, Fuller, no, Gaines, no, Galgioni, Glazer, I, Hall, I, Hancock, I, Hernandez, I, Hertzberg, I, Hill, Hueso, I, Huff, no, Jackson, I, Lada, I, Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, no Morell, no Wynn, no Nilsson, Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, no Vidak, no Wykowski, I Walk. Walk I. Please call the absent members. Barry Hill, De Leon, I. Galjoni, I. Hill, I. Nelson, Runner. Ayes 26, no, noes 11, the appointments confirmed. Member who's still under, under governor's appointments is file item 60, Senator De Leon. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Colleagues, uh, final set of governor's appointments. Uh, we have Betty Wilson as well as Lori Yu, uh, both also members on the Commission on Disab Disability Access. Uh, Ms. Yu is being reappointed as well as Ms. Wilson, two qualified individuals. Uh, they received no, no vote. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen, I. Anderson, I. Bates, I. Bell, I. Berryhill, Block, I. Canella, I. De Leon, I. Fuller, I. Gaines, I. Galjoni, Glazer, I. Hall, I. Hancock, I. Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Wessel, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leba, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nilsson, I Pan. Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, I Vidak, Wykowski, I Walk. Walk I. Secretary, please call the absent members. Barry Hill, Galjoni, I Pan, I Runner, Vidak, I. 
Ayes 38, no zero. The appointments are confirmed. Senator De Leon. Mr. President, if we can go back to motions and resolutions for an, an adjournment in memory. Without objection. Returning to motions and resolutions. <laughs> Members, it's a little noisy. Please give your attention to Senator De Leon. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Colleagues, it is with great sadness that I rise to adjourn in the memory of Stephen B. Sample, the much beloved President Emeritus of the University of Southern California. Mr. Sample was born in St. Louis, Missouri on November 29, 1940, and passed away this past Tuesday, March 29th, at the young age still of 75. Mr. Sample was a dedicated administrator, a mentor, as well as an innovator at the University of Southern California, USC, where he served as, a, as the school's 10th president for nearly two decades, 1990 to 2010. During his tenure, the university cemented its position as one of the premier academic institutions in the nation. Let's be frank. Prior to Steve Sample's ascension to the presidency of the University of Southern California, USC was not known as an academic powerhouse, perhaps for the football team and other athletic programs. But it was this one individual, Steve Sample. Under his leadership, USC rose rapidly in the US, US News and World Report rankings of American universities from 51st to 26th. And they are still climbing into hopefully what will be soon single digits. That's what Steve Stample started at the University of Southern California. He went to a campus and he changed the culture. He changed the academic culture. He elevated the standards for a very fine institution today. The number of its freshman applicants tripled and the university also became more selective with acceptance rates dropping sharply from 70%, 70% to nearly 24%. The university's endowment ballooned from $450 million to today $4 billion at its height before the recession, a testament to the fundraising prowess and the progress of the university. But despite his incredible success, quite frankly, it wasn't always easy. President Sample saw the university through some very extremely tumultuous times. Shortly after he took the reins, Los Angeles, as we all remember, erupted into riots and civil disobedience. While many faculty and staff sought safety, they left the campus to go to where they live, he actually remained on campus. He stayed on campus throughout, sleeping in his office, comforting students, visiting students in their dorm rooms, having actually lunch and dinner with the students uh, at the cafeteria. He cared deeply about USC, but also cared deeply about the city of Los Angeles and resisted mounting pressure to relocate to university elsewhere in Los Angeles. He saw the university as a community institution and sought to make it a much more diverse and inclusive environment that supports its local residents. We all know that USC, unlike UCLA, is not nested in a bucolic well-to-do neighborhood on the west side. It is, USC is right in South LA. But Steve Sample made sure that the culture at this academic institution included, recognized, and respected the community in and around USC and branched out this academic institution to make sure that the young men and women, the young boys and girls, saw this institution as a pathway for their own success in the future. While he is no longer with us, his imprint on the university and the city of Los Angeles still live on. Now, Steve Sample was a good friend of mine. And I had the honor of uh, developing a relationship with Steve and working with him on various initiatives when I was in the state assembly. Now I work a lot, as many of us do, with Mr. Nax, uh, Max Nikilius. But Steve truly was an incredible pioneer a Midwesterner, like so many Midwesterners who migrate to California 
for opportunity and for hope. And he brought opportunity, he found opportunity, I should say, and he instilled hope in many young men and women. Also, too, the University of Southern California has more international students from any, from more than any other academic institution in the United States of America and perhaps the entire world. That is done with intentionality. That is done with selecting certain board of trustee members and bringing individuals and other students from all over the world that actually greatly enhances this academic institution. It's a major loss uh, for the nation, for California, for Southern California, Los Angeles, as well as a great institution like USC. Now he is survived by his wife, who happens to be his college sweetheart, Catherine, their daughters, Michelle and Elizabeth, and two grandchildren. Colleagues, please join me in honoring the great memory of Dr. Stephen Sample. Now, I know we have a couple of Trojans here today on the floor who will also help pay tribute. Senator Liu. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, members. I also rise to adjourn in memory of former president of the University of Southern California, Steve Samples, who um, passed away this week. He's been a constituent of mine during my tenure um, in the legislature, and we enjoyed breaking bread on occasion with one another to talk about higher education and the well-being of Los Angeles. He was a gentleman, an outstanding leader, who, as the Senate pro tem has said, turned uh, USC, the University of Spoiled Children, into one of the most uh, highly respected, competitive uh, institutions now in California. His kindness and tenacity in bringing change will be sorely missed. And uh, I extend my condolences to his wife, Catherine, and his daughters, um, Michelle and Elizabeth, also. And we ask that we adjourn in his memory. Thank you. We're going to strike that from the record, Senator Liu. Yes. <laughs> and hear from uh, a fellow Trojan, Senator Hall. Thank you. I don't know what that was, but I want to love uh, Senator uh, from uh, the Southern California area for her great acknowledgement of the University of Scholastic Children. Uh, <laughs> Mr. President, um, as a proud Trojan, uh, I rise to adjourn in memory of former USC President Stephen B. Sample. Uh, President Sample was born on November 29, 1940 in St. Louis, Missouri. In 1991, President Sample left the State University of New York at Buffalo to become the University of Southern California's 10th president. And during his time as president of USC, the university, as Speaker Pro Tem mentioned, flourished. USC rose from 51st to the 26th in the United States. News and World Reports, universities ranking, applications tripled, and a USC chemist won a Nobel Prize. More importantly, uh, President Sample resisted the calls to move the university following the Los Angeles riots in 1992. Instead of giving in to fear, as other universities had done following previous events, President Sample insisted that USC remain an anchor and an anchor institution in Los Angeles. Because of his vision and his leadership, USC continues to give back to their community through volunteerism and philanthropy, uh, continue to show and prove uh, a diversity of a campus that reflects what California reflects. And at a time when just this week we saw a JLAC report that shows our very own UC system is failing as it relates to the admissions of minorities, USC continues to thrive in the admission of minorities and one of the highest admissions of minorities in the United States of America. President Sample uh, retired from the University of Southern California in 2010 and at the age of 69, but continued to stay actively involved with the university. I ask the State Senate to adjourn in his memory. Thank you, and I'm quite sure on behalf of Ricardo Lara, as well as fellow Trojan, uh, fight on. Thank you, Senator Hall, a tremendous loss to our Trojan nation. And uh, please, um, Mr. Pro Tem, bring President Sample's name forward so that he may be memorialized um, by our California State Senate, and may he always fight on. <laughs>